You guys voted, and today's episode of Timelines, we're talking about paranormal activity. Make sure to follow me on social media, Twitter, at Knights of Horror, and Instagram, at The Knights of Horror, to vote for the next episode of Timelines, which we have The Conjuring or Insidious. Go ahead and vote now on Twitter, my Twitter username, at Knights of Horror. Now, your feature presentation. Welcome to Timelines, a new show I like to bring to you where I talk about timelines, about various horror movies, etc, etc. You know, timelines and horror movies are very famous. Uh, the first episode we did was Halloween, and that tells you a lot about what timelines can do to horror movies. You can choose your own path, uh, kind of make your own way through these franchises. So today we're going to be talking about the infamous Blumhouse classic, Paranormal Activity. Now they made six movies in the franchise, and I want to talk to you about the chronological order of these movies timeline of how it takes place in this movie so without further ado let's just get it started Paranormal Activity, chronological order goes, Paranormal Activity 3, Paranormal Activity 2, Paranormal Activity, Paranormal Activity 4, Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones, and Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension. We're going to start off with Paranormal Activity 3, and I'm going to give you a brief rundown of each movie of how the chronological order works and how uh, it eventually uh, ties into one big movie, starting with Paranormal Activity 3. The first movie starts in 2005, before the events of the first two movies, but within minutes, the family uncover a haul of old VHS videotapes dating back to 1988, and the rest of the movie consists of footage of Katie and Chrissy from these tapes. The videos show the sisters making contact with their imaginary friend Toby for the first time. It becomes clear that Toby is in fact the, the malevolent demon who terrorizes the young girls, focusing primarily on Christy. At the end of the movie, amid the static, there's a quick flash of shot that shows the girl's childhood home designed with fire, something which is mentioned in the first two movies. Now going from there, we go straight to Paranormal Activity 2, where we uncover more of this story, which goes like this. The events of this movie take place two months before the events of the original movie, but there is a slight overlap, and this film ends with a depiction of events immediately following those in the original film. Now grown up and married, Chrissy has given birth to her son Hunter and she once again finds herself living in a haunted house. After a suspected burglary, uh, Chrissy's husband Dan installs security cameras around the home and they soon start to capture poltergeist activity. Towards the end of the movie, Dan performs a ritual to transfer the demon to Katie. This leads on to the haunting of the original movie. Soon after this scene, a message is split on the screen saying Michael was killed on October 8, 2006. From this point on, the movie shows what happened immediately after the first movie with Katie killing her boyfriend Micah. In the final scenes, Katie is seen entering her sister's house, killing the family and abducting her nephew Hunter. So we then move on to Paranormal Activity 1, where we do see, of course, if you guys have not seen the first Paranormal Activity, it's a classic, but we do see the events between Katie and Micah of how that went down and stuff like that, chronologically telling you the story of what happened to Katie and Micah in the first movie and the second movie and in the third movie we're seeing events of we're seeing events of Katie and Christy in as little kids of how they met the demon how the demon got attached to them and stuff like that so from paranormal activity it goes like this the movie slightly overlaps the second movie the events occur alongside the final moment shown in paranormal activity 2 the movies like the second one is set in 2006 and shows what happens at the home of Katie and Micah who have recently moved into a new home. After Dan transferred the demon to Katie in the second movie, the couple start to experience strange happenings. The story unfolds on a handheld video camera footage shot by Micah as he attempts to ascertain what is happening to him and his girlfriend. The movie ends with the possessed Katie brutally murdering her boyfriend. This then leads on to the ending of the second movie. So from there we see a possessed Katie who then goes to her sister Christie's house and abducts her nephew Hunter where that is another major story arc that we're going to get into in a little bit. But from Paranormal Activity 1 we go flashing forward all the way to Paranormal Activity 4 and you get to continue with the story of Katie and Christie. And Paranormal Activity goes as follows. 
At some point after the events of the end of the second movie, it seems that Katie is somehow separated from Hunter and now has been adopted by the Nelson family and is now known as Wyatt. The family's daughter, Alex, becomes the victim of a haunting which she captures on her MacBook webcam as well as hidden cameras around the house including an infrared camera combined with an Xbox Connect IR motion detector. The activity starts after Katie moves in across the street with a mysterious unknown child known as Robbie. When Wyatt befriends Robbie, he starts to learn about his true identity as Hunter and towards the end of the movie is taken by Katie after she kills his foster family. So, in Paranormal Activity 4, we're seeing Hunter grown up. He was sent to an adoption uh, clinic, and uh, he got a name change to Wyatt. And as the movie progresses, and when Katie moves next door with her new adopted son, Robbie, Robbie and Wyatt, aka Hunter, become best friends, and Hunter starts unveiling his past self as, of course, Hunter. And we do progress into the movie a little bit more, and we get more of the... Uh, relationship between Katie and Hunter again that come back into play like they did in the first three Paranormal Activity movies. From then on we move to Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones which follows the fifth film in the franchise and it goes something like this. The fifth film in the series is technically a spin-off and takes place in 2012 following the events of Paranormal Activity 4. For the first time in the series the film is set in a Latino community where a group of teenagers uncover a mysterious cult who have marked one of them. The Paranormal Activity is captured primarily on a GoPro cameras and footage includes many clues and backgrounds information on Toby, the demon which features in the previous movies. The teens actually make contact with uh, Allie, Christie's daughter, and the only survivor of the events of Paranormal Activity 2. Allie has spent the last six years researching the cult known as the Midwives Coven, and their practice of making pregnant women to possess their children in exchange for wealth or power. Towards the end of the film, the teens discover a portal which takes them which takes the form of a mysterious brown door. It takes them back in time to Katie and Micah's house in 2006, moments before Micah's death. If you guys have not seen Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones, at the end of this movie we do see, they do go back in time and we do see a different point of view that you didn't see in Paranormal Activity. You do see the point of view of Katie going downstairs and you find out what she does downstairs, what caused her to scream and stuff like that, what caused Micah to die, and you got to see a little bit more of that backstory. I thought that was kind of interesting that they put it in because it kind of tied the series all all around and stuff like that and and yeah it, it really tied up the series and it really really made sense after that. And the last movie in the series is Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension. The sixth and so far final film in the franchise. Uh, we do see uh, more stuff, more answers and stuff like that, and the sixth film follows as so. The final movie in the series and the last part of the story chronologically set in 2013, 25 years after young Katie and Chrissy encountered Toby. The movie follows the events of a haunting at the Fleege family home, which was built by the midwives coven on the site of Katie and Chrissy's childhood home, which burnt down. As the family prepare for Christmas, they discover a box of old videotapes, the same recordings from 1988 which featured in Paranormal Activity 3, as well as a series of previously unseen recordings from 1992 which show Katie and Christy taking part in their initiation to the coven. The recordings appear to show the girls using their psychic abilities to remote view the Fleege family in the future. The Fleeges start to experience hauntings at the hand of Toby, and their young daughter Layla becomes the focus of the activity. The tapes reveal that she was chosen 21 years previously as the ideal host alongside Hunter to complete the Coven's invocation of Toby. So, like I said, the chronological order for this movie is Paranormal Activity 3, 2, 1, Paranormal Activity 4, The Marked Ones, and The Ghost Dimension, where ultimately we get focused around four major characters throughout the series. That is Katie, Christy, Toby, and Hunter. Toby being the demon that's haunting all of them in this movie, and it's one long series of Toby haunting various families, but eventually all tie into this main story. This movie, honestly, uh, as they went on, yeah, they do get confusing, but I can do see if you do watch it in this chronological order, stuff does start to make sense, stuff does start to unravel and stuff kind of falls through. I suggest if you guys haven't watched the movies at all, watch them, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if you guys want to do it for fun, go watch them in chronological order, three, two, one, four, uh, the Marked Ones and The Ghost Dimension. Um, Paranormal Activity first came out I think in 2006 and I believe that was one of Blumhouse's first films ever uh, released. Yeah, not a lot of people know that that was one of Blumhouse's first films released. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Timelines. I am going to leave a poll on Twitter so be on the lookout on my social media. In the next timeline we are going to talk about do you guys want to see 
the Insidious Timeline, or the Conjuring Timeline. Voting should be available now on my Twitter. I will see you guys in the next episode of Timelines. Bye.